Alrighty, good evening, everyone. My name is Jocelyn McGill and I will be the moderator for Breakout Room 2. We're so glad to have you all with us. I am uh, the current equity team lead for the Future Peds Fres, and I am here to just volunteer and hear from all the amazing programs that we have tonight. Tonight we have six programs and each program will have about five minutes to speak. That gives us about 30 minutes with the remainder time for a Q&A session. For the individuals that are providing their program's presentation tonight, um, with that five minute cutoff, I'll just advance to the next slide and then that will kind of tell you that your timer is up. Um, and just remember that throughout the session for our students that are participating, you can use hashtag FPR webinar to ask questions on our Twitter to get the conversation going, keep it going after our webinar tonight. And then you can also drop questions in the Q&A portion of Zoom, and I'll be kind of tallying those and bringing up questions during the Q&A session. And then last but not least, don't forget that we'll have our residency Q&A session after our breakout rooms are completed tonight, and those will just be residents and students, so you can ask all the candid questions that you want. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. All right. First program that we have tonight is Children's National Hospital Pediatric Residency Program. Thank you, Jocelyn. Um, I am Aisha Barber. I'm the program director for the Pediatric Residency Program at Children's National Hospital in Washington, DC. Uh, I'm also a pediatric hospital medicine attending, and I have to ask you to excuse the lively sounds of my kids playing downstairs. It's the day before the first day back at school in like a year and a half, as you may be able to imagine. It's a little exciting for them. Um, I have the pleasure of working with the remarkable team that includes Dr. Catherine Posada, one of our chief residents who's here in the room tonight and can help answer questions. Um, and I'm happy to kick us off. Um, so we at Children's National are a large freestanding quaternary care children's hospital in the nation's capital. We have about 120 residents, 40 in each class. Um, and we have lots of information on this slide and on our website and our Instagram page. So I'll primarily take this time to focus on a few of the things that I think make us a little bit more unique um, and that you may not pick up from the website. Um, let's see, I think the most important thing about Children's National is the people um, and the practice model. I started working at Children's National in 2006. And I would say first and foremost, my favorite thing is the people, the people we work with and the people we serve. I was drawn to Children's National by the very diverse community of patients that we have the privilege of being trusted to care for. Um, and our community of patients and physicians and colleagues includes people who are diverse in literally every way that I can think of. Um, I love this community because it really brings together lots of unique perspectives to try to provide the really the best care for children in DC. We're also a two-in-one hospital. We serve Washington, DC's um, incredibly diverse community as the city's primary community hospital, but we also serve the larger region um, and areas globally as a freestanding children's hospital and, and referral center for specialty care, including every specialty I can think of. My youngest child has gone through our whole system from transport to NICU to the operating room to the floor, and I really have had the privilege of being cared for um, by people that I help train, and, and that really brought the big picture of what Children's National offers home for me. Because of our practice model, every year we end up with a nice mix of graduates going into primary care and hospitalists and other subspecialty fellowships and other interesting career paths like advocacy and public policy and global health. We um, had graduates go on to be leaders uh, in their areas of focus, including during the pandemic, we've gotten to work with some of our graduates who now work for the DC public school system and federal agencies also. Um, let's see, we focus on providing a well-rounded general peds training experience that can be a launching a uh, board for lots of different types of pediatric careers, but we're also glad to be able to provide unique ways to individualize your training that builds on your own, your own curiosity. So you can apply to one of our six tracks. We have a categorical track, a primary care track, our launch track, which stands for leadership advocacy, in ad, advocacy excuse me, under-resourced populations and community health. Um, we have a combined genetics track, neurology and research. Um, and then if you're still exploring areas of interest, that's wonderful also, we can support that too. Um, and then within each track, we have pathways. So if anyone from any track can, can opt to follow one of our pathways like global child health or child advocacy and medical education to layer on top of what um, their track has to offer. Um, with regard to our areas of focus, diversity, equity, and inclusion is a big one as is health equity education. 
They really value all of our differences and really aim for everyone to be able to bring their best selves to the table to benefit our patients and our educational climate. Um, and then we focused on diversity, you know, I think for a long time, uh, but we're really enthusiastic about growing and involving our regard um, regarding our approach to diversity as well. Some of the things that are highlights for this year um, are our resident led building equity initiative, which helps us to connect with our community. Also our institutions, diversity, equity and inclusion efforts, and I co-lead some of our institutions um, initiatives with regard to ways that we can systemically address equity in hospitals and GME. Um, and then hand in hand with diversity and inclusion um, is health equity education. Um, we um, have su substantial health inequities here in DC. So part of our program's mission is to train pediatricians who are prepared to address them, whether you end up in primary care or working in the cath lab, we really want everyone to be prepared to address this, the inequities that our, our pediatric patients face. And then we partner with our Child Health Advocacy Institute, which is a, a health equity institute within our, our pediatric hospital, and that they focus on data collection and community advocacy. Um, another area of focus for us is wellness. Um, we feel like this is essential, regardless of where you end up doing your training. Residency can be difficult at times, so we're really dedicated to providing individual support, as well as a structured well-being initiative that collaborates with our institutional provider wellness initiative. Our residents spend a lot of time teaching, so we focus on their skills as an educator and then also research. Um, for residents who are very interested in taking a deep dive, we have a research track and an R38 NIH funded grant program. And for residents who aren't certain about their focus on research, we have a, a REACH program which provides longitudinal time. So um, I know that these are special times that you're applying to residency in and it's harder to get to know the programs, but I feel like it's important to say that this will all work out. We're thrilled with our current intern class. They're thriving. Having had the opportunity to get to know and work with many of the pediatric program directors around the country, I can really say with confidence that you have lots of incredible choices and you can't make a wrong choice. So good luck. Hi everyone again, um, I'm Carolyn O'Day. You got to meet me just a few minutes ago uh, as the program director at the Children's Hospital at Dartmouth-Hitchcock and one of the co-chairs for the APPD North Region. Um, Thanks so much, Dr. Barber, because I think it's so nice for me to follow you because in many ways we are almost a, a very polar opposite kind of program and it's nice to see the comparator. Um, we're one of what I would call the small programs um, nationally. We have seven residents per year for a total of 21. Um, our chief resident who is a fourth year resident is joining us tonight. So you'll get to pick her brain about our program as is our coordinator, Megan Williams, um, who is amazing and uh, as all the coordinators are. That's the true secret to this process. Um, to give you a little bit of highlights about our program, we are the sole children's hospital in the state of New Hampshire. Um, and we serve not only our state, but also um, parts of Vermont, as well as Western Maine. We really have an academic medical center with a truly collaborative scholarly community. Uh, Dartmouth College is an Ivy League institution with a medical school right down the road from us. Um, and we also have a, something called the Dartmouth Institute, which really focuses on um, high value healthcare, health disparities, a variety of things um, that augment our residents' education. We really pride ourselves on the longitudinal relationships that our residents, faculty, staff um, have with our patients as well as our colleagues. And unlike many of the bigger programs that have tracks and, and sort of different opportunities for individualization, ours really focuses on each individual resident. And that's the benefit of being in a program our size. So as our residents move through training, um, they both complete those core requirements from the ACGME, but as they start to figure out where they're headed in their next steps, we can help design um, uh, a number of electives and experiences even within required rotations to truly uh, get them the education that's individualized to their goals, which is um, pretty exciting for us and for them. We have a really active scholarly activity and quality improvement curriculum, uh, something that, that is really exciting and um, University of Vermont is in our group. We're part of a three program Northern New England Advocacy Collaborative uh, with Maine Medical Center as well, which brings the three programs together every year, both to teach each other um, as well as our AAP colleagues uh, and 
and, and uh, faculty and, and pediatricians amongst the three states, but then also to have us um, focus in on advocacy opportunities that affect our three states in Northern New England. We have developed a personal and professional development curriculum that's been quite successful over the last year, and we are planning the move to an X plus Y schedule change uh, starting this coming July. Um, more on our website uh, if you have uh, are interested in more information about that. Um, we really, I would also say, as I've said before, are quite a close-knit community. Um, the faculty know our residents quite well and vice versa. Uh, and that's quite important when it comes to thinking about the next uh, steps in your, in your careers. I always tell people you have to look over a five-year period because when seven residents graduate each year, it, it, you have to see the, the, long, the long picture to, to see where people end up. And we're truly a 50% fellowship, 50% uh, general pediatrics, whether that's in the outpatient or um, inpatient setting. And our residents are incredibly successful in the fellowships that they uh, match to, which is always exciting. The recruitment season has just started for them as well. Lastly, we are located in sort of northeast, or pardon me, northwest New Hampshire um, in a relatively small town, but by having an Ivy League university, as I said, right down the road from us, uh, it allows to us to have those small town charms with sort of a big city culture and arts perspective. Um, there's truly year-round outdoor adventures. I always laugh. Everybody talks about hiking um, and, and skiing. I am not a skier, and I still love to live here and, and do the outdoor uh, opportunities. And we have a really affordable cost of living with excellent benefits for our residents as well. So they're truly able to have a nice balance um, when they're thinking about those the, the things that they can do when they're not in the hospital working hard, taking care of the children of New Hampshire. So um, we have a great program. Check out our website, follow us on social media. Uh, and as I said, when you get to um, speak with our chief resident, pick her brain um, later, she's got uh, a lot of information. Thanks so much. Great. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Jill Reinhardt. I'm the program director here at the University of Vermont Children's Hospital and a product of this program as well. So a few, a few years ago, I'm also a primary care pediatrician um, joined here tonight with our associate program director, Amelia Hopkins, and our chief resident, um, Whitney Seavey, um, really to just share uh, that Vermont is uh, a beautiful setting. We do have the four seasons, um, but we also have this really unique positive relationship between the Vermont Department of Health, uh, UVM and the community um, that has really kept our population uh, well protected and safe during the pandemic, but has also uh, provided many opportunities for advocacy um, and quality improvement um, for our residents um, that our residents get to take advantage of here in our state. I wanted to highlight specifically three things um, tonight for you about our community that uh, may not know or find from our website. Um, uh, one is, a, is about diversity. Burlington here is a refugee resettlement city. And as such, our uh, Vermont community is becoming more and more diverse. The youth in our community are now um, about 20% from, um, from communities considered to be underrepresented in medicine. And Burlington and Winooski are now our, their children in their minority majority um, school districts and reflect the population of patients and families that we care for in pediatrics. Our, uh, we have a building uh, strong families, a refugee clinic that our residents uh, get to do group visits with as new Americans come uh, to Vermont to settle. Um, and uh, it's a wonderful learning opportunity. Um, both the, the College of Medicine and the, the, the Children's Hospital have a commitment from leadership at the hospital um, from the top down to build physician faculty that reflects this new and changing com uh, community. Um, including activities uh, uh, within the residency, within primary care, clinical, um, and the children's division at the hospital and our AAP Vermont chap chapter to, um, to improve um, our health equity um, conversation. Um, we have uh, didactics. Um, all of our didactics include a health equity pause. Um, and we now have had for the last two years quarterly health equity professor rounds that are resident driven. Um, the second thing I'd like to highlight is 
is our commitment to resident wellness. And that our program is really a resident driven program. Even over the past two to three years, we've made several changes that have uh, been resident driven that have improved the wellness for our residents, including no longer have 24 hour shifts. Um, and as a senior or second and third year, all our nights are consolidated into night blocks, which we are hearing wonderful things from uh, about being a nice balance for our residents, um, not having to have sort of random uh, night shifts um, in there anymore. Um, we also have started this year an automatic opt out um, psychology uh, experience with uh, our resident psychologist um, who has lots of experience with working with individuals in medicine. She's also providing us with um, some facilitated uh, debrief sessions um, in a regular manner. And then also um, we have debrief sessions for challenging clinical scenarios, um, as well as a faculty a facilitated healers reflection session. Session, um, which again helps us to reflect on the stresses that we've all gone through during this, this pandemic uh, and that we see in this uh, increasingly challenging pediatric mental health uh, concerns that we've seen with our patients. Um, and the third that I'm really excited to share with you is our commitment to behavioral mental health training, um, essentially so that wherever you rotate within our children's hospital, you'll be considering the behavioral and emotional health of your patients in a three-pronged kind of way. We have a mind body buddy program where residents are matched to a child psychology, I'm sorry, child psychiatry fellow, um, who um, confers with you during your continuity clinic um, and uh, have this mutual relationship over the course of your, your time with us. Um, the second pro <clears throat> prong is curriculum in child psychiatry. Um, everything from helping to deescalate situations um, to an approach to a disruptive child. Um, uh, we have a very robust curriculum now on behavioral health. Um, and then finally, um, we have a core elective that's offered during your first year um, that is a collaborative effort between our child psychiatry, developmental peds, and the community pediatrics to really focus on um, learning the community of support for your patients uh, here um, in terms of mental health. Um, so those three things I really wanted to highlight, as well as the, the opportunities for uh, wellness and health activities, outdoor skiing, hiking, water sports, foodies, crafts, et cetera. Um, oh, and I had to mention beer too, because I really wanted me to mention that, and lots of music. Um, and, uh, and so hope to hear from you all soon. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Stu Mackey. I had talked to you all a little bit earlier as well about the Northeast region. Um, I'm the program director at UMass Bay State um, and a pediatric cardiologist by training. Um, we're also in the small um, program category. We have nine categorical pediatric residents a year and one resident who's actually here today who's a neurodevelopmental disability resident, um, Raja's on the call right now. Um, and, uh, and we actually have them with, those residents with us for actually the first two years of their training, and they go to Boston Children's Hospital to complete their training in neurodevelopmental disability. Um, I think what really highlights, um, I wanted to get across uh, during the short time we have today, is that we're really a program that tries to develop great general pediatricians. And that's really whether you're planning on going into fellowship or general pediatrics, as was mentioned um, before, our program also is about 50% fellowship and about 50% that go into general pediatrics. Um, and during the time we have with you, we actually institute a learner teacher manager model where you get increased responsibility as you move from your intern year to your final PGY year. And it's a very purposeful way of kind of progressing you so that in your learner year, your intern year, you're really, um, you know, kind of brought in slowly. And it's been very helpful, I think, in the midst of the pandemic where people's experience during medical school may have been a little bit different. Um, and we have a boot camp during which the first two months of your residency, you really get a, an opportunity to learn how our hospital works um, in a more kind of gentle way than kind of getting right thrown into things. We also offer a longitudinal offsite clinic for all of our second and third years where they really are able to prepare for their next steps in their career. So if they're interested in a fellowship, they can work with the, somebody in that area. If they're interested in general pediatrics, we can kind of find exactly what they're looking for in their practice as they leave um, our area. We're located in Springfield, Massachusetts. Springfield is in Western Massachusetts um, and we're really the major regional center for Western uh, Massachusetts, meaning that we're the major tertiary care center. And so we have a really nice big referral area that we kind of pull into 
And what's really nice is that Springfield is a really an underserved area um, and we get to take care of those patients, but we also take care of the suburban areas around there. And then you just go shortly out of, of that area and you get into very rural areas. And so you really get that wide breadth, breadth of different types of patients that all are kind of being seen by you during your three years with us. Um, we really also have kind of begun to focus on behavioral health in our training, and we've actually instituted a second year rotation where you do behavioral health and work with child psychiatrists in the community to really develop an expertise in assessing and managing common child mental health problems. And we've incorporated that into things like our morning report and other areas to really help to develop that skill in our pediat pediatricians that we train. Um, we have a community society and health rotations as well in the first and second years to develop skills and advocacy. And before the pandemic, really that involved getting out into the community and getting to know um, the community that you're serving. Um, this past year, we actually had our first year of a resident initiated anti-racism curriculum, which will be continuing on to try and help promote the, our understanding of kind of the disparities in different um, populations that have happened in medicine. And we had leaders in the community actually come talk to the residents about um, anti-racism in medicine. Um, and, and, you know, I think that the other thing that we've really tried to do is work on um, our residents understanding things like implicit bias, microaggressions, restorative justice. And we're implementing a, a, a new program this year, actually, which is pretty exciting, um, looking at active um, bystander training for all of our residents and all of our faculty are also getting it. And we're in the process now of also getting our nurses, our MAs, so that we all speak the same language and trying to make a safe and, and um, uh, helpful workplace that, that residents can be in. Um, uh, so we're located in Western Massachusetts. We're about 30 minutes north of Hartford, about an hour and a half away from Boston and about um, two hours away from New York City. And so it's really nice for the residents because they get a really nice quality of life. Um, the cost of living is quite low in comparison to some of these other areas, but on the weekends, they're able to go to Boston or New York or other cities if they want to. Um, we've got a lot of great outdoor activities in our area, hiking and skiing. I enjoy skiing, so I really like it. Um, and there's lots of great restaurants as well. There's actually a lot of universities all around our area. Um, and so they bring in a lot of great cultural events and um, other, other things that our residents are able to enjoy. We're also not too far from the Berkshires, which is a really great area as well for, um, for art and culture. Um, and that's about you know, 45 minutes to an hour away from where we are. Um, so that's about all I have, but I will, please look at our website too. There's a lot more information there as well. And we're on um, Twitter as well as Instagram, as you can see below there are our handles. Uh, and thanks so much for joining us today. Hi everyone, my name is Caitlin Daly. I'm the program coordinator for the pediatric residency at Albany Medical Center in Albany, New York. Uh, I'm here this evening with Dane Nickel, who's one of our uh, chief residents. Um, our program director unfortunately couldn't be here. He really wanted to be, uh, but he is on service. So the Bernard and Millie Duker Children's Hospital at Albany Medical Center is responsible for over 700,000 children um, as one of the only tertiary care centers for children in uh, 25 counties of Eastern New York and also a bit of um, Southwest region of New England. Um, we're also the number one center for the care of complex and chronically ill children in the region. Uh, we have a relatively small program uh, of 11 peds residents per year. And we also have our med peds program that has uh, four residents per year. Um, we work very closely with them. Um, I'm, I'm gonna have Dane talk about our curriculum and educational experiences, wherever he is. Yeah, so our schedule runs on 13 blocks, four weeks uh, each. Um, beyond our required curriculum, we offer many opportunities of individualized um, opportunities as well as elective rotations. Um, because of this, we don't have any specific track programs, but we allow residents to completely personalize their uh, three-year experience with us. A unique feature that we have at Albany Medical Center is the PEDSTAR Research and Advocacy Program, which is a scholarly track for advocacy research as well as QI. Um, what's really unique about it is that it offers each intern four weeks free from complete clinical duties during which they receive immersive training in advocacy project development, uh, research design, and publication. Um, and this is done with all of the uh, 
residents um, in that class together so that you have the opportunity to bond with each other while also advancing and developing a project that you can uh, further de uh, develop over your time here. As well, uh, we have a bunch of uh, initiatives for diversity at uh, AMC and the uh, one that I would like to really highlight is uh, the LGBT health youth curriculum that I personally developed and uh, continue to uh, provide to the residents and will um, have uh, continued on after I leave. Um, but it helps to provide the residents with education on LGBT health issues. Um, and this, this was actually developed out of the PEDSTAR program. Uh, some other aspects that uh, we focus on with diversity is uh, social determinants of health. And we pair with other departments, including the psychiatric department at Albany Medical Center to help develop um, the resources that our patients can use. And our clinic is a primary uh, resource for the underserved community uh, to the greater Albany area. Uh, a final unique character to Albany Medical Center is it's actually located in the capital of uh, New York State, which enables us to have great access for advocacy um, to the New York State level, as well as to the Department of Health, um, and enables you to be able to do rotations with the Department of Health. Um, being that Albany is a city, um, it's a great place to live. There's a lot going on all the time. And you also get the shared experience of living both in or near the city, um, which is very affordable. Um, but I, speaking as both a resident of Albany and partner of a current resident, um, it's perfect for a resident stipend, uh, lots of low cost renting and um, also the opportunity to buy. Um, you get to still escape to the outdoors. The Adirondacks is right in our backyard. Um, and we're only a couple hours away from both Boston and New York City for a quick weekend trip. Um, we do offer four weeks of vacation per year, um, some of which you can take advantage and take off uh, two weeks at a time. So that's very um, nice for our residents and they definitely take advantage of that. Um, we also have uh, some cool wellness initiatives, you know, just back, piggybacking off of all the vacation, <laughs> um, including our own resident wellness council that hosts events throughout the year. Um, we try to get together all of our residents once a block to have um, a night out and um, they have yoga classes and um, also bring in speakers. Um, we're working on launching a wellness conference series as part of our regular conference curriculum um, that's going to be launching later next month. Um, and we also schedule protected time for all of our PGI ones to attend a session with hospitals and employee assistance program um, to connect them during the first couple months of residency with um, all the resources that they need uh, for themselves, especially during uh, a time of significant transition. Um, so that's all I have. I'll just say that we can catch, you can catch us on Instagram at AMC Peds. Um, our residents host Day in the Lives for all their residents. Good evening, everyone. I'm the last program rep represented here. My name is Shereen Kelly. I'm the program director at St. Christopher's Hospital for Children. We're located in Philadelphia. We are a medium-sized program. We match 24 categorical residents each year and two preliminary neuro residents who are with us for their first two years of training. Our hospital is a freestanding children's hospital that's affiliated with Tower Health and with Drexel University. So we have medical school connections and connections with lots of other hospitals who have residencies and fellowships that we um, collaborate with. Our program highlights are listed on the slide here. We're really known for being um, a passionate program about advocacy. 80 to 85% of the patients that we serve are Medicaid insured. And so we really have a, a diverse population, both in socioeconomic status, but also in um, nationalities. We, we pride ourselves in family-centered care. We have excellent uh, translation services. We serve people of incredibly varying nationalities and we, not a day goes by that we're not using our translation services both in the in and out patient settings. We, um, our goal in the residency program is really to produce pediatricians who are clinician educators. 
we try as much as we can to instill from the very beginning of the journey a love for learning and a love for teaching. Some of the things that we do to enhance this is in a longitudinal professional development curriculum that starts about three months after you settle in with us in your intern year. We try right away to build the skills of education and teaching. We also pride ourselves in working hard to make sure that everyone in their training is able to contribute in a scholarly way. The scholarship takes lots of different forms from bench research to advocacy research to educational scholarship and to lots of other initiatives. We have a very passionate faculty that are, that are invested in multiple ways across the city, both in uh, writing in our Philadelphia Inquirer, in leading literacy efforts, in helping in homeless shelters. So there's a lot of activity that happens on our campus, but also off of our campus, and residents are invited to participate as they're able. We do have some diversity initiatives that we're really proud of. The Minority Outreach, Retainment, and Education Committee is a group of faculty in our program who really work to recruit underrepresented minorities into our program, but also faculty, and to link the two groups in uh, mentorship so that people feel at home and feel welcome and mentored through their journey with us. We also have a newer LGBTQ initiative over the last five years that's done a lot of work, both in education, but also in how we serve the community. Um, that group has been instrumental in really helping us think about how we deliver the services um, to our community around us. I'm fortunate to work with three APDs um, and two coordinators. We also have three chief residents one of our rising chief residents will be in the resident forum later, and um, we'll be happy to answer any of the questions. I'm an outpatient general pediatrician. I will say that one of the highlights of my work is really collaborating with lawyers. We have a medical legal partnership housed in our outpatient department. We have a team of social workers. We have a collaborative primary care clinic that works specifically with children who are at risk for abuse and neglect, trying to change the trajectory of their young lives. We also have faculty that are dedicated to multiple hunger initiatives, both on our campus and in our city um, proper. So there's a lot happening um, for, with our faculty, but on behalf of our community. We really try from the beginning of our time uh, with the residents to mentor them along the pathway as they choose their, their um, intended career. Each resident chooses a pathway midway through their second year. They can be in primary care pathway, the inpatient pathway, or a consultative pathway. And from there, they can choose specialized electives, flex electives, research projects that make sense for them. We have had great success matching um, residents and fellowships all across the country. The St. Chris family is pretty much everywhere and we are always um, eager to see one another at national meetings and things like that. I don't have to advertise Philadelphia too much. It's a great region. I will say that um, my love is sports. And so we may or may not have been uh, in the Super Bowl, a, a other Northeast team recently, um, but we also have great, a great music scene, lots and lots of outdoor activities and just a plethora of things that residents can do in their free time. Thanks so much. And I'm looking forward to answering questions um, as they come up. Thank you so much uh, for these amazing presentations to Dr. Barber, Dr. Odea, Dr. Reinhardt, Dr. Mackey, Ms. Daly, Dr. Nickel, and Dr. Kelly. Now we will go into our Q&A session. I know that some of the questions are already answered in the chat. Um, so thank you to our program leadership for that. I believe the next question that may not have been addressed just yet is from Sheila Krishnan. And their question is, how has your program supported residents specifically 
through the pandemic, which has brought to which has brought so many changes to medicine and med ed. Were there changes made or are there changes to come? And we can have maybe one or two of our programs represented tonight answer this question for us. I could start us off and just say, I think the pandemic um, caught us all a little bit by surprise. So it took us some time to pivot. We um, switched from inpatient, sorry, in-person teaching sessions almost immediately to virtual sessions. And we were able to enlist our subspecialists also to help us um, in keeping up the educational content, even when patient volumes were lagging. So it is, um, it is continuing to be a challenge. Our volumes are recovering now, but we did um, a pretty abrupt pivot into a lot of virtual teaching, a lot of virtual experiences, as I'm sure most, um, most programs did. I would agree with that. We had a similar experience. Um, I think uh, during the pandemic, we definitely focused on wellness, but we, we had to take a step back and look at multiple different dimensions of wellness to make sure we weren't missing anything. Um, we definitely changed the way that we did teaching. And now that we're kind of back to robust volumes, we, um, we have kept some of the things that we changed because we like them. <laughs> um, we also um, have expanded some of our mental health and support resources during the pandemic that I know a lot of programs have done, scheduling debriefings, enhancing our small group lunches to have more contact with program directors. Um, we have psychology services for skill building. We have free employee assistance program, um, mental health visits for anyone in the family um, and um, free visits with psychiatry for any of our trainees, um, resident wellness initiatives. I know Cassie Catherine, um, our chief resident added some in the chat as well. Uh, but I think everyone has, has beefed up their wellness um, offerings during this time. Yeah, I would, I would say in, in Vermont, the thing that we missed the most during the pandemic were all those little natural supports that you get from like sitting next to your colleagues and lecture. Um, and so trying to find reasonable ways to fill that support when you can't gather together has been a challenge. And, um, and we've necessarily kept the things that we love, like virtual um, lectures have been great for a lot of things, but now we um, definitely have our monthly, um, we have leadership team meetings in person now um, in a larger space um, and, and trying to support our wellness activities outside the hospital now that we can gather. Um, but it's definitely been, that was probably the biggest challenge during the pandemic for our program. Thank you for those answers. Looking to the chat, I believe that we also already got some um, answers about holistic review, couples matching, and what happens if a resident has an emergency. So I will move on to the next question. Um, can you speak on resident unions and if they are becoming more common within programs? I did put an answer in the chat, but it was a short one because I don't know, I'm sorry, <laughs> but um, <laughs> our program does have a union. It's a very longstanding union. We have a great relationship, um, but it's also helpful um, uh, the, and to have that relationship with the union as well. I would say probably most of the programs in the Northeast, as far as I know, don't have unions. I think um, UMass recently, did have one, which is um, UMass Memorial in Worcester, Massachusetts. Um, uh, but, you know, we'll see. I, I think that e either way, it's important to know that the residents have a voice and that they'll be able to be heard whether or not there is a union or not. And sometimes the union allows them to have more um, of a voice, I think. Sometimes it doesn't really matter. So it's just important as you go through the interview trail to get an idea of how are they heard, what kind of things are there, what kind of GMEC meetings are there that they can kind of have their voices heard. Great, thank you. And I believe that may have been the last one from the chat that wasn't already answered by our program leadership. So if you had a question um, that may have um, popped up in there, it should be an answer. So I can move on to some of the questions that our executive directors kind of forwarded, forwarded to us. The first question is, if you all as program leadership were residents now, what would you be most excited about for your program?
I'm I'm happy to start. Um, uh, you know, that's a great question and something that I think about every year at the start of recruitment because our job as program leadership is to sell our program to you guys. We are recruiting you in the same way um, a college football team recruits players to, to them. And, you know, um, it's funny, I trained in a different size program than I lead right now. And for me that the individualized opportunities at our program and um, the, the way that we are able to support our residents to uh, get them to that career goal has been the most exciting thing for me. Um, and I, I think it just wasn't uh, in, in place in that way when I trained and, and a lot has changed. ACGME guidelines have changed since that time, um, really thinking about those individualized opportunities, but it, it's so exciting. And, you know, pediatrics is a lot of fun. We have a great time taking care of our patients, even in those stressful um, situations. So you picked a great specialty. But for, for me at Dartmouth, it's that individualized curriculum and, and opportunities for our residents and that close support they get. I think I would echo the same thing and just say that um, the same thing that drew me to St. Chris is what keeps me there is there's a really passionate faculty that is creative. We try new things and sometimes we succeed greatly and sometimes we don't and we go back and we try again. Um, but we really try to keep our community in view and we try to be creative with how we listen and engage them so that we are not bringing a solution that makes sense to us, but that we're really trying to listen um, and help with health outcomes and health equity and all of the different challenges that happen in a big urban setting. But we're trying to listen and learn from our community and serve them. Um, and there's just a lot of great people in pediatrics. Um, I echo what Carol said, uh, you've picked a great career and you're gonna find those people all over the country. I would say actually for something very similar despite having a different size program in a different place, um, I would be most excited about probably two things, a health equity curriculum that we're adjusting um, and making sure it's aligned and infused with everything that we do and the community connectedness that comes along with where we are and um, uh, how that health equity curriculum kind of comes into play in real life is really nice. Um, and then I'm also very excited about um, the way that, you know, there are so many opportunities to individualize your experience um, since there are lots of different subspecialties and mentors um, and the space and time we carve out for that. Um, but I think that mostly I would just be excited to be going into pediatrics. <laughs> I would say for UMass Bay, so the thing that I think that this training program um, would really excite me about is, is you really get to be the pediatrician for the patients that you see in the community. Um, you know, you're the one that's getting the messages. You're the one that's really their, their first go-to. And I'm a pediatric cardiologist now, so I don't do that as much anymore. But I think that's probably something that I kind of quickly was jumping to my subspecialty and maybe didn't appreciate the opportunities from seeing just general pediatrics um, every day and really getting to get into that as much as they do in our program. That would be something that would really excite me about, about our program if I were kind of starting over again, even though eventually I picked cardiology. <laughs> And I put a, a brief thing in the chat about, about Vermont, but uh, similarly, I think the relationships that you build with our faculty and how much we really get to know you individually and help mentor you towards a career that's best for you. Um, and through all of our various connections we have, um, it's, uh, it's really quite wonderful to um, be a part of that, that journey through the whole um, three years and beyond. I think that we're closing in on about a minute and a half left for our webinar tonight. So just thank you again to all the program leadership for your presentations, answering their questions so candidately. Um, for our students, don't forget if you are on Twitter, you can use hashtag FPR webinar. You can ask questions there. Many of the pediatricians, the program leadership, and residents that are on, on Twitter, they'll still, they'll still answer your questions throughout the week and beyond. So we appreciate you all for coming tonight. Don't forget you can stay on for uh, the third 30 minute residency happy hour and we'll see you at our next webinar.
breakout rooms are closed and we will be back in about 45 seconds. Thanks everyone at Future Peds Res for all your hard work. We really appreciate it because this is an effort, I'm sure, every time you do it. So thanks so much again and have a great night. I've also restarted the recording just in case we want that.